Hello, bonjour everybody. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for watching my video. And special thanks for those who subscribe to my channel. This video is about flames of war and how it works. And the subject is artillery. There's four types of artillery. We have the mortar. It can be mounted on the back of an half track as well. The second is the howitzer. It's a, just a gun with wheel. The third type is a, a howitzer mounted on top of a tank. This is a WESP from the German Army. And the fourth type is a rocket launcher. And we can see a Panzer Warfare here with the rocket in the back. Artillery is considered indirect fire, meaning that you do not need to see the objective. It is of a greater distance than normal direct fire in range. But you may find a unit that is, has the possibility to fire artillery, has also the possibility to fire direct fire as well. Who can direct artillery fire? So we have a formation commander. It can be a tank, like if you have a formation of Panzer IV, that can be the formation commander of the Panzer IV. Or in this case, we're going to use a Panzer Grenadier HQ commander. Also, you can have a dedicated artillery spotter for the artillery. And in this case, we use an half track 250 as an observer for the artillery. Also, in some case, the artillery, if he can see in a distance far, can direct the fire for himself. So that's the three kind of people who need to see the up aiming point to be able to use artillery. Here's an observation I will make, and a food for thought. So think about that, and if you think the rule that app apply differently than what I say, just feel free to mention it. But when you look at the rule book, it just said that the observer need to see the aiming point to be able to use artillery. It doesn't mention you need to know the enemy is there. While Flames of War on YouTube channel, and they tell you how to play the game, they are specific. It said your formation commander, your spotter, or the artillery must see the enemy before placing an aiming point, and you must see the aiming point and just watch the video there. Okay, so can you spot anything on the battlefield? Uh, no, no. For this unit to be an eligible target for my artillery, they need to be in line of sight of my spotting team. Mm -hmm. My M4 Sherman company, the commander of it, can easily establish a line of sight to your Panzer Grenadier unit, so they'll be my target. So we can see on that short clip of the video, it said, must see the enemy, then you place your aiming point with the template, and you must see the aiming point from any of those three to be able to fire artillery against the enemy. Now, because the rule book is not specific, it doesn't say you must see the enemy, then people take advantage of that to fire at enemy that are hiding behind a forest, for example, or building, etc., because they play with the rules that say you must see the aiming point. So I'll show you later on, we're going to use the rules, must see the aiming point, it doesn't need to see the enemy. So we're going to use the rule book, so you don't need to see the enemy, and we'll go with, it's your turn. Regardless, you are using an R3 gun, a self-propelled gun, or a mortar, the same principle will apply. So regardless of any of those three, the, each step are the same. So the R3 cannot move during that turn. Even using blitz move would be considered to have move. So who can spot? The artillery gun can spot. A formation commander, an observation vehicle can spot for the artillery. The formation commander or the observer cannot move during that turn and cannot shoot or assault. Because they are doing a job, they are directing fire from the artillery. So it's your turn, and you do all your movement, and it's now time to shoot. So we're going to use artillery first. So first thing you need to know is where you want to shoot, and if you see it. So let's say my three pieces of artillery here want to shoot at the far end of the map. My troops on the ground don't see the enemy, but the person who plays see the enemy. So I decide I'm going to shoot at those infantry troops over there that are hiding behind the forest. So does my 
actually see the enemy. They don't see it, but I have an observation. The thing you need to know is, am I in range? So the range for the west is 72 inches, so basically six feet. So you're, and the map is four by six, so you are in range. Second thing you need to do is place your aiming point. So I'm going to move the camera so we can follow the step. So we know the artillery is in range, but cannot see the objective. So the next step is to have an observation vehicle or the formation commander. Here we have an observation vehicle in the wood, have not moved this turn, so he can direct fire. So he choose an aiming point to direct fire. Usually when you want to place your aiming point, you make sure that it is seen by the observation or the artillery, and you use a template. A template is six inches square, and this is a salvo template. So we're going to use the artillery template because we use the WESP. Then you place your template and you try to see how many units I can see under the template with my aiming point being seen by my observation vehicle. So let's say my observation vehicle can see this template right here. That will show that I can cover at least three teams. Let's say we're going to put four teams like that. So we got four teams under the template. So it's like here, we can see four teams. I could not put it here, but then I would be able to see only three teams. So the best way and the most effective way to hit the enemy that are hiding from my troops is to put the template behind and the aiming point behind the, the enemy, put my template and see how many people are covered. So as long as the enemy touch or is under the template, it is good for firing. So if it is only a quarter of the team, you can fire at that team. So in this case, it's not touching the forest, it's over open field, and I covered four teams. So that's the basic. So you need your observation vehicle or the artillery to see the aiming point. You place your aiming point, and then you may adjust with your template. So as long as when you move your aiming point, it can be seen by the observation of your vehicle, you'll be fine. So I can put it right here, place my template, and it covered 14. So now we have to make sure that there's no friendly unit near the aiming point of your artillery. So basically, when you fire artillery, it's not a precise firing because there's many things that may change the capability, the wind, how much powder is in the H shell, etc., to be precise firing. So Flames of War have a rule that say, when you look at your template, you cannot have any friendly troops within four inches of the edge of your template. So you place your template, the arrow must point toward the artillery, in this case, and you have to make sure there's no friendly unit in within four inches of the template. So we are good with that. In this case, uh, my self-propelled gun is aiming in another direction of the map, another direction of the map. You may turn, or you must turn, your artillery toward the aiming point. There's no reason to fire an artillery while your gun is pointing the complete opposite of the map. So. The rule book said you must turn your artillery, and it's not considered firing, toward the aiming point. Now, if we want to range in, and it said, for example, your WESP skill is Veteran 3+, plus, and you look at your ob observation vehicle and said skill is a 4+, plus, I would need to range in on the 4+. Plus. It's always the, score, the worst score of the two that would be used for ranging in. In this case, like I said, the West is a 3 plus, and my 250 observation vehicle 
is a 3 plus, so we just need to range on the 3 plus. So I have 14 of the Aero Motor Rifle Company Soviet under the template. So I have to look at is it on? And it says for the rifle motor company, aggressive 3 plus. So each team is it on the 3 plus. Because I was able to range it on the first attempt, I just need to roll the 3 plus to hit my motor rifle company. But let's see, my first attempt, I rolled a 2, so I was not able to range in. And second attempt, I rolled a 6, so I range in on the second attempt. In this case, my motor rifle company doesn't get it on the 3 plus because it was ranging on the second attempt. I had a plus 1 to the it on. If I was able to range on the third attempt, then I would add plus 2 instead of to be it on the 3, it would be it on the 5. But here I was it on the fir on first attempt, so I need to roll a 3 plus. So for I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, so the first one is it, second one is save, third one is hit, and the last one is save two. So now I got two hit and two I did not hit with the artillery. My infantry need to make a save. And for the infantry a save is three plus, so you need to roll. In this case I'm gonna roll. I got a four is safe. And let's say this one, I roll a one. So one is safe, the other has been hit. And because they are gone to ground in their trench, because it's the beginning of the game and they haven't moved yet, I need to do a firepower with my artillery. If the unit was moving, they are not in a bulletproof cover, I just need to, they will have been dead. In this case, they are gone to ground in their trench, so they dig in. So he's it. My West need to do a firepower, and the firepower for artillery, I need to roll a three to kill, but I roll a two, so they are safe. But the unit have been hit two times. If a unit is hit by the artillery, they become automatically pinned. So now we have a rifle company team that never been seen by the enemy and they are already hit by the artillery and they are pinned down. So that's great. Thank you Flames of War for that special rules. So anyway, that's how we do artillery firing. So the artillery cannot move during the firing. They need to see the aiming point. If they don't see the aiming point, you may use a formation commander of tank or infantry, or you may use an observation post. The formation commander or the forma formation observation post cannot move, shoot, or assault during that turn. The observation post and the formation commander can only direct fire to one artillery. So if we have two artillery units, you cannot put two aiming points. Or if you place two aiming points, you need at least two people or two teams to see one each aiming point. But let's say we have an, a mortar platoon is in the vicinity too, is in range, and we want to use the same aiming point we can. In this case, it would be like rolling for a second attempt. So we use the first attempt to aim to the aiming point with the observation post, and we succeed. So the mortar will roll, and he need to roll a three. He rolled a five, he was able to range in. The artillery, uh, in that case the mortar, will hit with a plus with a penalty of plus one because it is considered, even if it is his first roll, a second attempt to range in because the observation vehicle already range in the first attempt with the wets and the second attempt is used with the mortar. And the mortar would use the same template, so it hit 14 and it would try to hit the 14. 
But most of the time, what you do is you try to range in, use the artillery to pin down the enemy. If under the template there's a tank, you use the top armor of the tank and you roll the dice. And if your top armor is one and the end tank of the west is three, you need to roll two to possible bailout or three plus to be safe. So if there's a tank, you will roll and you roll a four, it will be safe from any artillery firing. Let's see. We finish our turn, Soviet turn. The next turn, you can repeat bombardment. So even if you were ranging on the third attempt, now it would become ranging on the first attempt because it's a repeat bombardment. The observation vehicle cannot move during that turn if they want to do the range in and be considered first attempt. If the observation vehicle move, you may use any other formation commander or observation vehicle for the aiming point or the artillery itself. And that observation vehicle, formation commander or artillery do not need to see the aiming point at this case. So let's say my observation vehicle move away to somewhere else that nobody see the aiming point. So your artillery may use as a the range in the officer. And instead to hit on the three, you will need to hit on the four because he doesn't see the aiming point. So you will roll a dice for each under the template. And instead to hit on the three, you will hit on the four. So in this example, my observation vehicle did not move, so it's a repeat bombardment. There's four teams under the template, so we hit on the three, there's no penalty. So we roll four dice, and we need to hit on the three, so we got four hit. Now each team need to make their save. So the first team will make a save, he make a save of six, but because it's a repeat bombardment, he need to reroll all his save. So he need to reroll and roll the six again. It's saved. The same apply for this one. He fails, so it's a possible. The next one save. We need to roll. It's save. This one. He failed. It's a possible. But let's see. He saved. The second one. He failed. So it's a possible. So it's really important on repeat bombardment. Every hit, the infantry team in this case need to make a save. If if he succeed the save, he need to repeat the save to be safe. If it, when he re repeat his save, he fail, it is a possible destruction. So because they are still digging, we need to do a firepower. So we need to roll at least a three plus to destroy. In this case, that team would be destroyed. So that's covered artillery, how, to, how it works. So how you range in, you fire at the enemy. The second part of a artillery presentation is using a smoke screen. The second part of this video is how to use smoke bombardment. First, you need to you look at your unit card of your artillery piece. In this case, we use a WESP. We take the unit card and we go with the line of weapon. It said a WESP is a 10.5 centimeter. RTE piece, the range is 72 inch or 180 centimeters. The rate of fire is at RTE and it's tank 3, firepower 3 plus. And there's a note. Inside the note it said forward firing, so it need to face where it's firing. And also it can smoke, it can do a smoke bombardment. If you have a piece of artillery and in the note it doesn't say specifically smoke bombardment, you cannot fire smoke with that artillery. In this, this exa example, the West can fire smoke, but if we add Hummel on the battlefield, there's no smoke bombardment with the Hummel. So in this case, the West can do. So the, how it works, the same principle as artillery. You need to see your aiming point. 
In the case of the West, they don't see the aiming point, but we have an observation vehicle. So we place the range in, and we can place it anywhere that the observation vehicle can see. So I'm going to place it near my infantry team that move right in the middle of the field. The difference is when you fire artillery, you cover the template, and your friendly unit has to be more than four inches of the template. When you fire smoke, you can fire smoke right over your infantry team or right over the enemy v team. And in this case, I'm going to fire near my infantry, so there's enough opening toward the Soviet that if I have any other unit nearby that see the Soviet unit, it will not be blocked by the smoke. Now for the smoke, it's the same principle. You take your skill of the observation vehicle, in this case it's a 3+, plus, and you take the skill of your WESP, and the skill is 3+, plus, to your range in on the 3+. Plus. Even if you take the template and it is over the forest or the hill, there's no penalty for terrain and smoke screen. So you need to roll a 3+, plus. you have 3 attempts. If you fail all 3 attempts, you remove the aiming point, and there's no smoke screen to cover your Panzer Grenadier in this example. So I can roll all three dice in one shot because if I range in on one, two, or three, there will not be penalty associated with the firing because we don't try to hit enemy. We just try to put a smoke screen. So I roll. I got one, one, five. Let's say I range in on the third attempt. Doesn't make any difference. I can still use smoke, and it doesn't have to be precise. It has to be near the aiming point. So you place for every piece of artillery you fire a template of four inches wide by two inches deep. So that is four inches wide. I put it right here, and it is two inches deep. I fire a second piece of artillery because it doesn't cover my entire infantry. So. I place a second hit on the ground, and because I cover my infantry, I don't need to fire a third shot. And in the book it said you don't need to fire all piece of artillery when you fire a smoke bombardment. But it's important to know that, that you fire one shot or three shot, the unit has fired a smoke bombardment, and you can only fire one smoke bombardment per game. So now we have a smoke screen that covers my infantry with the Soviet. How effective is the smoke screen? A smoke screen, if the enemy or the target is more than six inches, then they don't see my infantry. So in this case, the distance between the Soviet infantry and my Panzer Grenadier is more than six inches. They cannot fire because they don't see my German Panzer Grenadier. And that's the reason why it's two inches deep for the screen, smoke screen. It's the same principle like for a forest. When it's more than two inches, you don't see through the forest. And in this case, the smoke screen is deeper than two inches, so they cannot see my Panzer Grenadier. Now you can fire through a smoke screen if the smoke, for example, is right here and the distance between the Soviet infantry and my Panzer Grenadier is less than 6 inches. Then in this case, when we look, we are less than 6 inches between the Soviet and my Panzer Grenadier. You, the Soviet, on their turn, or even my German and his turn can fire at the Soviet and the Soviet can fire my Panzer Grenadier when it is his turn. But, for example, my Panzer Grenadier can fire at the Soviet, but they have a penalty of plus one because they are firing through a smoke screen. And when it would be the turn of the Soviet, 
they will also have a penalty of plus one when firing at the German. So that completes my video on artillery and how to it works. Hope you enjoy. If uh, you have any issue with about what I said and how the rules work, feel free to put comments below. I'll read them. I'll search too, and I'll come back to you. But if you make your point and you have uh, the reference with it, I'll appreciate. I'm doing all, all all it works to learn how to play the game. So thank you for watching my video. Hope you appreciate. I'll see you soon with my next video. Bye bye.